fossilized there and horcrux lands the fossilized into the whip bringing another player down a huge explosion with the occult overlord killing three more players on the stack now that has got to be one of the best builds in the game for pvp right now like what yes bitch happy roll you're gonna roll dodge right here and Got a nice little, uh, nice little, uh, 1v1 here, or a nice little clipperoonie here. This sort doesn't realize how much damage is about to happen to him. Oh. Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to be bringing you the most busted PvP build that you could possibly run in Midyard Mayhem on the Dragonite guys. And we're not going to waste any time, let's hop right into it. Alright guys, so let's get into it. If you have not seen my Oaken Break PvP build for the High Isles DLC, which I, I think that's what this DLC is, I don't really know if we're looking forward to Lost Devs. Please go check that video out before you watch this one because I'm just going to breeze through this one. This is pretty much an amendum to my previous build. I've spent hours and hours in playtesting this, especially in 1vx scenario. So this is the absolute most optimized way you can possibly play, you know, without race changes and actually spending money in the game. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Character sheet, everything completely unbuffed. You don't have to worry about recoveries whatsoever. Ideally, you will not want to be the Breton. I am a Breton on this class. You want to be a High Elf or a Dark Elf um, or, an, I, or an Imperial. Um, I think Imperial might be best in slot. High Elf and Dark Elf might be kind of second. Um, it's entirely up to you. Um, there's four races, Breton, High Elf, Dark Elf, and Imperial. I would suggest you could possibly run Nord, but I honestly do think Imperial will be absolutely best in slot. So. Oaken Soul Ring, obviously we're running all this. Uh, now we're actually running the Shadow Mundus. I personally would not recommend this. I just did this for some of the clips, getting 20k whips and just uh, make it look flashy. So Shadow, you probably want to swap this to the Warrior to give you even more weapon damage. You don't need recoveries whatsoever, guys, I promise. Now, when it comes to the actual sets, we're running Potentates on the front bar. Now this is where the build changes a little bit on my previous build video that you guys better go watch if you haven't seen already because everyone and their mother is running this on their DK right now. Um, I had two decisives. Since then, I've actually swapped uh, one of the decisives to Nernhome because it was brought to my attention that these can only piggyback once and they can't keep ping-ponging back forward. I was told by multiple people I'm proven wrong, so apologies for that. These cannot ping-pong more than one time, so I'm just going one decisive, one Nernhome. I'm going with a flame damage enchantment to proc the combustion passive and then also the shock damage enchantment to proc the concuss status effect increasing your damage by 5%. Back bar, uh, you don't have to worry about, just slot whatever because we don't have a back bar, right? Monster set we're running is blood spawn. Ideally, you'll want to run as much medium as you possibly can on this build. Um, I think I have one light just for the Undaunted, but I have either five medium i should have five medium one heavy one light i do it doesn't matter how you mix and match as long as either your chest or your helmet is heavy you know just to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to your armor stat values i'm running tri stats on the big pieces and it really doesn't matter as long as you have like 27k health you only have to run a really high health on this build guys because you're going to be the, the whole idea is to be in corrosive as long as possible okay so we have blood spawn it's going to give you a lot of ult for what it does i don't think there's a better monster set in the game that's going to give it to you there is one other set i can't remember off the top of my head that also gives you ultimate but it's kind of unreliable it takes a little while to set up this while you're taking damage you're generating ult so definitely go with this and we're running play break now play break is your bread and butter this one get buffed next patch technically everyone's saying it's a nerf but no it's, it's, it's actually a buff if you kind of delve into the patch notes so this is mostly going to be used for our explosions, right? If you're 1vxing, the only thing you have to do is get one kill, guys. 
we're going to be using a cult overload which is a passive that they change in the champion points and also plague break so you're going to have two explosions going off and also if you guys did not know a cult overload goes through corrosive armor as well corrosive armor caps you out at any damage you take caps out at three percent of your max health well cult overload actually bypasses that because it's oblivion damage so this is yeah the more you know right so uh running well fitted on pretty much everything and then i have you should have one heavy reinforced i do not have it because i'm just too lazy and i don't want to change it so that's what you want now when it comes to jewelry play break with tentates however you want to partition this out is 100 percent on you and then of course open soul ring with a weapon damage enchantment now i'm actually running two infused magic cost reductions the reason i do this is because i do duel as well and those fights are typically much much longer than your 1vx's right so in those fights i found that it is necessary for you to have two infused cost reductions and because the only way you're getting resources back is keep procking your battle war passes by using corrosive so the idea is to be using your battle war passive generating more resources than you're actually consuming as long as you can stay in that threshold you're never going to run out of resources that's why i have two infused cost reductions now you can get away with just running one um possibly if you're in a group of like two people all right two or more you could just slot complete weapon damage across the board but since i'm solo this is a solo build guys i do have to have two cost reductions um, i'm not vampirism at all so you don't need a vampire on this build. You don't have to worry about being squishy because you're going to be in corrosive 80% of the time anyway. So don't let any of that kind of detour you from it. Ask anyone who's run this build. They're the most tanky mofos you'll ever see the entire game. It's really annoying. And you do hellacious damage literally all of the time. So um, this was a quick rundown of the build. Again, guys, if you want a more in-depth build guide, please go check out my Oak and Break PvP build video it, it, it's probably like 20 minutes of, of just things that you kind of need to know so uh when it comes to our skills skills are a little bit different from the build none this is where um i swear to you guys this is the exact bar setup that you will want to run you want to run coag for your burst heal shattering rocks for a cc as well as a heal flames of oblivion is our spammable plus this is what we use to proc our seething fury stacks which keeps our molten whip procced at times three pretty much 100 percent of the time and you can put out hellacious damage by doing so now what i did change off the original build was taking off burning embers and replace it with resolving vigor this is amazing because this really helps with your magic and sustain because you can offset that to your stamina and it's really really handy having a very strong dot over time i also forgot to mention we're dual wield you can run too handy if you want but i think dual wield is better and then of course our ultimate is corrosive armor because of potentates instead of costing 200 ultimate this now only costs 170 if you was to run imperial this will increase that even further so you guys kind of see what, what i'm putting together here the, the most amount cost ult cost reduction you can get the better so that's going to do it for the skills i mean there's no bag bar there's really nothing to discuss i mean oaken soul is broken soul um what i do want to discuss is the champion points so when it comes to blue tree, your one VXing, a cold overload, no if ands, buts or about it. Deadly aim, mastered arms, both of these proc our flames of oblivion as well as our molten whip, which is our only two sources of damage really besides play break. And then the other CP that um, I, I've actually been kind of playing around with, guys, is running fighting finesse. Now you don't have to run fighting finesse, but this will increase the damage of your critical hits and also your critical healing. This is how you're getting 17, 18k crit heals like all the time. Now you can run this. This is more of a flex wherever you want this blue tree to be. You could almost just put this in untamed aggression just to get the, you know, a flat value. Uh, next, we're going to tab over to the red tree. Now these uh, subject to change, right? So I put points into balance vitality because I think 2700 is kind of what you want to run on this build. Next, we have survival instincts. This is amazing. Um, we're going to have pain's refuge. I mean, this will reduce our damage taken kind of on our downtime on our corrosive you know giving us a little bit more mitigation and then we also have sustained by suffering but you know when you have a negative status effect it's going to give you recovery there's no point in slotting uh major protection or relentlessness because you're already going to have that anyway because of uh broken soul and when it comes to, over to the green tree all these are quality of life things I always go for the war mount all the speed stuff gifted riders i'm um, using steed's blessing out of speed um out of 
out of combat movement and also liquid efficiency uh one more thing i want to know guys i'm trying to keep this as quick as possible again go watch my other build video i slow it down it's much more in depth okay um what you do want to run to really make this build completely op uh, you want to run bewitch sugar skulls i forgot to say that at the beginning but i did kind of float through the stat sheet you can go back and pause that bewitch sugar skulls you do not need smoke bear haunch i assure you guys and when it comes to potions you can run tri stats but if you have the money guys please for the love of god try to invest in these major heroism potions or excuse me minor heroism potions these essentially act like a tri stat potion but instead of giving you health it actually gives you minor heroism for the entire duration. This is how you're able to keep Corrosive up with such a high uptime. You make these by Dragon's Blood, Dragon's Rum, and Columbine. So, that does it for pretty much the entire build, guys. This is what I'm going to be using during the entire duration of the Meteor Mayhem. It is going to be absolutely glorious, just as you saw in the clips at the beginning. You know, Chris Arias went on record to say, hey, this is probably the best build of the patch. Okay, so guys... I'm not bullshitting you with a thumbnail when that says, hey, this is the best build. I have received so much hate, so much love over this build. Either you love it or you hate it. You're going to come across it. And the only way to really counter guys, you fight fire with fire. If you're DK running a two bar and you run into a one bar DK rocking a permanent corrosive build, you're going to get your asses. The fuck your ass cheeks clapped. OK, that's that's just the way it is. So. With all that being said, guys, hopefully you found this very helpful. I look forward to streaming for you guys for the next few days over the weekend. I may be traveling a little bit here and there, but I will try to give you all a notification when I go live. If you do not have the bell icon toggled, please toggle it just so you know when I go live, guys. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. About 50 to 60 percent of you guys haven't already. Also, do not forget if you want one-on-one -on -one pvp coaching i have tiers for that and patreon as well as youtube memberships if you want to help support the channel that would be absolutely amazing but the best way to support the channel is just with a simple like and sub guys if you have a little bit of extra coin you want to join the memberships you know kind of show some support for your boy horror products all that is down in the description below all right that's really all i had to say happy hunting may the force be with you because this is one hell of a build to contend with Put it on. You only have to have the right traits. I know you're going to have a good time with it, guys. It doesn't matter if you're a veteran, casual, brand new. You slap this on, you're going to be slapping kids around all over the place. Now, if you have any questions about the build, hit, hit me up in the Discord. Also, link down in the description below. And I'm rambling at this point. I always talk with my outros. So, uh, yeah, peace.